It's Friday night, and what the fuck are you doing? I'll tell you what you're doing. You're sitting home dreaming about sweaty, built men in underwear. And who better to do it with than the iconic classic wrestling podcast? And here's your host, Iconoclast and Dick Taco. Welcome to the Iconoclastic Wrestling Podcast. I'm Iconoclast. And I'm your host, Dick and Taco. I, when I say wait till I point to you, you just did it anyway. Every and week. Then, and then I, I got to ask you this, because we talked about this before you started. You talked about how you, you did, how you never liked Ricky Morton or Robert Gibson. So what, you never liked the Rock and Roll Express? Not at all. I never understood why people liked them. Like it was the early 80s. They got big in Mid-South. They came over. They came over from Memphis, right, in 83 or 84. It was the Rock and Roll yeah, Express. All shitty, no, they all said Condry, run. Eaton, and Cornette over there separately because Cornette started in Memphis. He got traded over there, and that's how the Midnight Express got started. And that's how the feud started, too. And you like the Midnight Express, Absolutely. Fucking lootly. And didn't they f- always feud with? Yeah, up into they, them and the Fantastics. Another semi- homosexual tag team of the mid early like the Johnsons Bobby Fulton and Tommy Rogers I think one of them is dead the the Johnsons no no not at all like that the stuff that you bring up is ridiculous all right so what do you I mean? admit the shit when I was a kid is on ridiculous on another level but yeah at that time you got licked by the bushwhackers oh yeah August of 89 <laughs> 35 years ago a couple weeks ago um, wait August of 89 you would have been 9 years old no 10 oh I would have been 11 in December that year. Now, Dave Meltzer mentioned me on his podcast. What did he say? He said something about dickhead podcasters stuck in the 90s. I was like, he's talking about me. He's talking about me. <laughs> well, um, you know, there's all these, um, well, dickhead uh, pod, uh, you know, casters, uh, well, stuck in the you know, 90s. Uh, uh, all right, enough. You know we're broadcasting on Friday the 13th this week. Are. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh yeah. Two days after nine huh. eleven. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk. Okay. So let's talk about all out first. Let's just do the all out part. All right. And then let's I just do that because that was the do, big thing. I just saw you wanted to be keeper cut. We'll do that I don't later. even know if we're gonna have enough time. Well, because keeper it. cut. I mean, I'm doing a lot of cut. It probably won't take that long. I mean, let's let see, me bring like, up. There's the, not let me that bring... much WWE shit on here. No, there isn't it. Uh, hold I on. I saw the thing about Bret Hart being in, on Raw, I'm very surprised about that. Well, don't that. bring it up until we get to the news. Anyway. Uh, no, well, like, let's just, we can just talk about that now. I mean, like, I saw the picture of it. It doesn't, it looks like like Weekend at Bernie's. Oh, my God. Well, he's had two strokes. That's not even funny. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, like... I had one of them, like, when he ran into a car on his bicycle or something. So, yeah, so now Brett, what, Brett's going to be doing stuff for WWE and his sister-in-law's going to be doing stuff for AEW? Brett's been there forever. Yeah, I thought Brett hadn't been doing stuff for them for like over 10 years. No, he wasn't there between 97. He came back in 2010. He's been there ever no, since. No, but then. like for the 2010s and, you know, the bit of this decade, I didn't think he'd, he'd done anything. I know he had that match with Vince. That was 2010. Yeah, that was WrestleMania 26, which is an underrated WrestleMania. All right. You did not see the pre-show because I talked to I your mother. Asleep. I was no, asleep. No, but. She says you don't get the pre-show with Triller TV. No, because I buy it on But I, I need to talk about this. Because this was the most wait, god wait, awful. Wait, l- 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 let me get it open. Oh my god! This just so the, that I can look at it. I know, but this was the most god awful thing I've seen since an episode of WWF Mania with Todd Pettengill. Who's Todd Pettengill? One of my favorite commentators. He wasn't it's even like a commentator. Michael McGill Cuddy. No, that was Mike McGurk, Leroy McGurk's daughter. 
Let's see. Okay, the match on the Mike McGillicuddy, that was... The Acclaimed defeated the Iron Savages. That was the worst fucking match I ever seen in my life. You say that a lot. Because say- the Acclaimed over... Iron Savages. Nobody fucking knows who they are. Why are you paying these guys? Apparently, the the, the Iron Savages aren't on contract. They get paid by. I wonder why. I mean, apparently, they're they they have like a following online. All right, but put it this way: even if you're paying these guys per appearance, you're bringing back the same fucking dreck every week. <laughs> Nobody's clamoring for this. Uh, so but you were like, the Iron Savage, don't you know? No, I don't fucking know. Jack Jameson and Boulder and Bronson. Get it out of here. I know them. I've seen them on Collision. This match. Now, the premier athletes. I didn't even know Tony Nese was in there. And Smart Mark Where? Sterling is still there? <laughs> Why are these people still there? Why are they employed? <laughs> Smart Mark Sterling should be... I can't even say bag of groceries because we're in Jersey. They don't fucking give you bags no more. He just... He belongs ringing up groceries at Acme. He sucks. <laughs> But you got Hologram, the retarded luchador. If you Hologram's see him. good. Hologram. No, he good. wasn't that night. And Sammy Guevara, still. And Dustin Rhodes, still. Why? You know what? I'm going to do keeper cut off this card as we no, go down. No, no, no. claimed I'm keeping. No, no, not yet. Not yet. We'll save that all for the end. No, we'll save no, that for later, okay? I'm so fucking pissed off now. Why? Because of the, the, this pre-show? Yeah, and I took one of those gummies because I knew you were going to come at me hard about some of the shit I said. The Bang things. Bang Gang. Austin Gunn, Colton Gunn, and Juice Robinson defeated the Dark Order. Ah! Like, why are they doing... Like, It's like you have like one good team. And let me just tell you how Pizzeria Uno wrestled in a shirt and tie like Mick Foley or Erwin, wait, Erwin oh, wait, Arshister. Oh, wait, he wrestled? Oh, that yeah, he... Fat piece of shit. He really... Erwin Arshister. But I don't like the Bang Bang Gang without Jay White. I think he's hurt right now. Yeah, I told you his feelings are hurt because they haven't done a, a fucking thing with him. The next was Undisputed Flatulence. Matt Haven, Mike Bennett, Roderick Strong. One of those guys are great. Strong. Bennett looks like a 50-year-old truck driver. What happened to him? Which guy? He is Mike Bennett. Which one? The bald one. He used to <laughs> look... He was an attractive man. He was? Yeah, like, and he's married to Maria? That red-headed strumpet? Ooh, Maria. <sighs> Oh, Maria Canellis. I remember when he went to WWE, they called him Mike Canellis. You see, I just remember there was a storyline that I remember seeing in this compilation of bad WWE moments from like the late 2010s. That could be a Memorial Day telephone. Like, no, uh, and like there was some, you know, there was like FTR scratching their asses on the ring. The Uso Fuck shaving them people. Too. I'm so mad about the, how they are. They are ice cold. <laughs> <laughs> Virgil was hotter than them. They, uh, yeah, if they are so cold, if they were sitting on the rocks right now, they would get hemorrhoids. But then there was, and uh, then there, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, there was a storyline where like Maria was pregnant, and she kept saying that like every other wrestler was like the father. Miro, I have no idea. Miro, I have, let's stop right there. I, Ricochet, I, I Bing Bing Bing. Uh, stop what? right there. Because when was the Bing Bing Bing? When was that? Ricochet Rabbit. He was a character. You don't ever watch the show after we record it, do you? I got shit to do. Oh, my God. I'm in school. So you can listen to it while you're doing stuff, can't you? I have an apartment now. Yeah? Anyway, this match, I wasn't done with the description. The Undisputed Flatulence <laughs> defeated the Beast Mortos and Shane Taylor promotions, which I can't even call sweatpants promotions anymore because he doesn't wear the, the, the fucker swim trunks. He doesn't wear the swim trunks anymore. What does what, what, what he, he wear? He's wearing like long tights. <laughs> form fitting. He looks like Nia Jax from the waist down. Oh, speaking of Nia Jax. And uh, Action Andretti. And Top Flight. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't get to that. Top Flight. I was just so disappointed by were the they in the Were they in like the steward? Oh. The flight attendant outfits? No, they were in like the jumpsuits like Tom Cruise and Maverick. Wait, really? Hey! <laughs> um... Speaking of Nia Jax, I got to say this real quick. You'll be very happy to hear this. I saw this awful backstage segment of her and that Barbie-looking girl, Tiffany Stratton, who everyone says Toodles. who everyone says is attractive. I, I don't she think looks so. Disgu- I think she just. I don't know. I guess think she looks like she's a plastic doll. I'm with and, you, brother. To me, that's not attractive. No, but Nia, there's a million blondes around. No, but and Nia Jax comes out in like this denim outfit. Oh my god! And it's like, was it like a denim couch walking? 
It was super oh, tight. Don't get me excited. It was super tight. You could see like the fat rolls. Oh, stop it. Oh, this calls for a smoke and a nap. <laughs> Some over here. Feed I'm tapping your, out. Feed your burgers. All right. <laughs> now, after now the most. The main show. Hold on. After the most underwhelming pre show I've seen since an old episode of the Starcade Control Center 30 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Wait, is that the thing you told me about where they would do like the. They would just keep the same eight playing. minute clip three times, but you watched it because it was, it was hot shit. Anyway, they over with MJF and Diego I did, Garcia. I only saw the ending beatdown of this. Now, I had, I have to say something. I was about. trying to rouse myself from my slumber. I had to have, I might have to, like, because on the format, I wrote something about Daniel Garcia getting big money because I, I got that from somewhere and it was incorrect. But Daniel Garcia is working without a contract right now. But apparently, Tony Khan is afraid WWE will snatch him up. What? For what? To clean the fucking John? <laughs> This is the first match he's gotten above, like, well, it's still the opening match, but it's with one of the top guys in the company. But, like, I think he's got real potential. He does, but he doesn't have it yet. Well, and, like, the they need Tony's to do something with But it also, now also, MJF wins with a nut shot, but MJF is now taking time off. Because it makes sense in the storyline. I know, but why they did you even... see a beat the shit out of him. Why would you book him to have time off when he just fucking came back? And time off could be like two or three weeks, as far as you know, or a month. These guys, these, these fucking guys. As far as you know, time off could be like a month. I don't know. Swerve deserves it, but... Also, that match made sense. He got fucking murdered. We'll talk yeah, about that later. I like that. I love gratuitous violence. You're not going to get me like over here being like, um, well, uh, you know, I didn't like it, but well, um, uh, we'll, uh, you know, we'll talk about uh, that when we get to it because I've seen some very stupid reactions online saying that it was too violent. They went 23 minutes and 40 seconds, MJF and Garcia. And Garcia finished them off with a tombstone pile driver off the second turnbuckle and then shook his neck around, which was already held together with. They were all wearing kinesio tape. They looked like they were fucking Christmas presents, like it was ribbon. <laughs> Guys wear that a lot. I know, because it's supposed to be good, but I think Tony owns stock in it or something with the amount of shit that was wearing. That, and, like, you can see with some guys, when you see, like, the cupping marks, because... Yeah, Osprey. I saw him do that before. That Kyle O'Reilly has done that before, too. S match number six. I only saw the end... I only saw... This was a good match. It was. I was disappointed in the outcome until later on, because it made sense. The Young Bucks, the Matthew and Nicholas Jackson, our illustrious EVPs, Ugh. defeated the Blackpool Combat Club, Claudio Castagnoli, and Wheeler Yuta. I mean, I only saw great part match, of this match, though. I can't believe it was only 15 minutes and 45 seconds. Well, you got Claudio's a great wrestler. Yuta's a very good wrestler, too. And the Bucks, as much as you hate to admit it, they can put on a good match. Yeah, right? I guess. Match I'm not going to admit it. Match number seven. But wait a minute. This, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I was disappointed in this because this was really good. We, Wheeler, you just come a long way, and Claudio is Claudio. He's um. Oh, well, we'll talk more about them later on. And one of my, in my favorite moment from the night later in on. In match number seven, which was one of the best matches I ever seen, especially towards the end, in 20 minutes and 20 seconds. Pac and Will, Will Osprey. Osprey defeats Pac by pinfall. Poison Ranas into Styles Clashes. Into and Pac's older too. Like he's got close to forty. Like and he's well, I, he's obviously he's honestly in great shape. I mean, but that it was amazing. It's come a long way. Since Styles Clash and the whole arena calls it Styles Clash. Well, that's what it is. Nobody did it before him. And no, but it was great because the whole arena said it at once. And then you know into Hidden Blades into Storm Drivers. Oh yeah. I, there was that was one of the best. Like I am glued to an Osprey match. Have been for years, especially with a guy. But like now that Pac. he's more accessible in the states. Well, yeah. The next match, I did not see the end of it. This was very good. But I saw Shirley Hemphill from What's Happening, Willow Nightingale, come out in her sweatpants, and I was like, I can't even talk right now. You're, you're gonna. So have you've to, come around. You're gonna to have her. to take this one. You've come around to her. Where are my cigarettes? There was. Uh, I saw a chubby girl in like. Like pigtails and sweatpants. I mean, what, what's the man to do? It's a sickness. It's not something I'm proud of. Be still my heart. It was, there was, um, again, it was very violent. I've seen a lot of people say this is AEW's best ever non-title women's feud. Former friends turned enemies. Chris Statlin is a fucking beast, though. Oh, yeah, she is. And I'd see her fight Marina Shafir. 
Yeah, and then, oh, God, they kill each other. Marina, I mean. I used to not like Marina Shafir, but. Should I call her Frau Shafir of the neo-Nazi gang? But, but now yeah. that she's, but, but, but this new gimmick she has with Moxley, I think she she's a. I think it's better for her than it is for him. Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll good for him. That good for him if he's putting somebody over there. I said something nice about this generation's Billy Robinson. <laughs> Billy Robinson. It's not even fucking. It's not even, he ain't Jackie Robinson. He ain't Brooks Robinson. He ain't Billy Robinson. Who's Brooks Robinson? Who's Brooks Robinson? The second greatest third baseman of all time. Whatever. Mike and Schmidt's then, the first. Fucking a. <sighs> Kiss the shrine. <sighs> anyway. And then there was. Um, there was light tubes, barbed wire tables. Yeah, I fell asleep during this match. You're gonna have to take this one. It I think really I passed good. out after I saw her in the sweatpants. Chris oh, that I think, much for me. Uh, I forget who. I think Chris Statlander won. She 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 did. It says here. Yeah, there 15 was the, minutes yeah. even. Uh, there was the spot where I the, like their women aren't afraid to bleed. Yeah, I think there's a lot of women who aren't afraid to bleed. I I know damn well WWE doesn't allow it. I've never seen a woman, very rarely, maybe during the attitude, or maybe Trish Stratus, but I can't say for sure. I don't think I've ever seen What about a woman. China? I don't know. I, I really don't uh, know. No, they, they're probably scared of her spreading something. Her face would have, like, shattered into a million pieces, man. China always looked like Jay Leno in drag with ridiculous <laughs> hooters. Do you know those costs are, like, $50,000 because they were custom made so they wouldn't, like, break in the ring? What, was, what the hell are they made out of? Steel? There was like some custom silicon, I think. Dental dam. <laughs> anyway, next match was the four-way, which was fucking great. Yeah. Takashita's going to wind up beating Okada at some point. I yeah, think. Well, that's what they're building towards. But this here. was 15 minutes even, too. Okada. Great match. Okada, Takashita, or Takeshita and Okada could be very good together because you saw, I've been calling Okodi lazy forever now. And you, something woke him up during that match. I don't like think he's lazy. Kid, well, yeah, he is for all that money. I mean, he got up there for the drop kick, but he only hit him in the chest. He used to hit him in the face. I was like right there watching him do that in Philly one time. He hit Jay Briscoe right in the fucking mush, dude, off the rope. It was unbelievable. Such an athlete. But Okada retains the Continental Breakfast title against Mark Briscoe, Orange. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Orange Cassidy. And Kanosuke Takeshita with the Honorable Don Callis. On commentary. Oh, he was great. I love it. It's like, Briscoe's busted open. Callis goes, good. <laughs> He's a good commentator, too. This match, this next match, I did not see who won because... Mercedes. I heard it was better than one of her it, usual matches. Yeah, because of yeah, mainly because of Hikaru Shida. But uh, oh, I yeah, I would say so. I but know. I don't, I don't even I remember, don't. I don't even remember the winner in this. So we're just gonna Mercedes. get rid of that one too. Um, Brian Danielson defeated Jack Perry by pinfall in a great match. Now that Jack is over. No, every you have an arena of eight thousand people all chanting "fuck you, Jack" and "cry me a river." No, he's got heat. That's different. "Cry me a river" is over. "Fuck you, Jack" is the heat. Okay, well... He gets his heat. He's getting... He's got good heat as a heel. Yeah, now he does. It took him forever. They went the long way around with it. Sent him over to Japan. The whole fucking gimmick still makes no sense. Why is he the scapegoat? He got to come back. Punk's the (laughs) scapegoat. He left, you fucking coke-headed Pakistani pussy. Well, like the idea is that he's the scapegoat because, like... You know, he's the one that the public's blamed for. It still makes no sense. Everyone still loves Punk. getting fired? Yeah, the, he, people blame him for Punk getting fired. Wow, but, it is kind of his fault. Everyone still loves Punk. No, it's not Perry's fault. I don't care what you think about... Pe- Punk should have been the veteran. In, Punk was the veteran in the situation. He should have been the one to not get physical. If, yeah, if I was trying to talk to you there, if you just showed me up on TV, I even picked it up before anything happened. Um, And I, you're back there playing with your fucking hair, your long-ass girly hair... That looks like your Troy Palomalu in a Head and Shoulders commercial. I'm gonna fucking push you too. Whatever. If you come at me, I'm gonna choke you. Because I really don't want to fight. And then I'm gonna tear my tricep. And then Why? I'm gonna, and then and no. you're, you're you're Jack Perry. In oh wait, no. And then you're gonna tear your other tricep in, then, in the process of yeah. It. And then fart and tear your. And then ACL. Ten months will have a really bad strap match. Yeah. 
That's uh, oh, that Jim Cornette actually praised that. Jim Cornette more than me is like he really likes punk. Well, you see, Jim sitting out on his porch looking up at the moon. Jim makes a lot of sense. You shut up. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. It's like a video game, like a kung fu movie. He yep. doesn't sound like that at all. Yeah, he does. Look, no, he doesn't. If you listen to He's him. He's got a good. very annoying voice. But anyway, Davidson and Perry go 27 minutes, 35 seconds. Great very match, great much. match. And the Claudio, end, who had already showed up in his neo-Nazi yeah, outfit earlier. The, the end of this, when they all come out. Now, when Christian Cage came down... And Moxley showed up there. I was thinking Moxley was going to do something when they're all standing there. And he stepped forward a bit. I thought he was going to like attack Claudio or something. But then they get in the ring and they put their hands up. And I'm thinking, oh, well, it doesn't happen. And as soon as I think that, boom, European uppercut straight to Danielson. And then I was screaming at the TV when Claudio this and Danielson would be a good match. This was a fucking amazing. It was. You got, they got, made a statement, a tidy statement that night with a lot of stuff they did. You got Wheeler Yuta there, you know, acting his ass off, where Pac's holding him back, and then... Well, they're going to have to fight because you they're going to have to defend the six-man title together still. Who knows? Maybe, or else they're going to... Or maybe... They'll just vacate it, and then we'll have another fucking tournament. You know how long a trios tournament will be? <laughs> they should do it in Philadelphia the weekend Chikara used to do King of Trios. Which was great because you would see guys from all over the world in the Indies. I remember the Young Bucks and AJ Styles were a team one year. And you had you had Ice Cream Man and these other... Fire these, Ant. Fire Ant. The Ants, that's right. You know who Fire Ant is, right? Who? Orange Cassidy. Oh, put the mask back on. Hey, he's one of AEW's best people. Yeah, whatever. William James Sipperly. He's from New Jersey. Uh, what, what part? Uh, Central West Jersey. What's the town? I got to look this up. I forget. It's some, like, no-name town you've never heard of. Dude, I've been driving around looking for jobs for two months. You have no idea towns I've driven to. Towns I didn't know were towns. Stewartsville. Yeah, that's up there above Tom's River. <laughs> but uh, anyway. That's a very broad statement. And also, the thing with Moxley, like, his expression was just dead and cold. Where he just... That wasn't, he wasn't acting. He's just... just that's, he's... Johnny same face. No, but it's like the idea is, you know, it's like he's not angry. This is just a job he's doing. And he just takes the plastic bag and puts it over Danielson's face. And he pulls it. And now I I remember when Terry Funk did that to Ric Flair on a pay-per-view in 1989. Really? And people were up in arms about it then. But now you got Twitter and shit. People are like, I thought it was a good matter. The the final match, the thing with the, the thing. I oh. we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, in a we'll get second. to that in a minute. But I am very excited for where the storyline. Oh, goes so am here. I. It's about time they have a storyline that you can just sink your fucking teeth into. They, they've had several. Name one that doesn't have something to do with punk. Hangman and Swerve. All right, you got me. Danielson chasing the title. Osprey and MJF. That like just fucking started. Osprey and MJF. They, they had one match. They're 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 done with each other. No, no, but it's not a rivalry. It was built up the whole summer. Danielson and Hangman, Hangman and Kenny, the Bucks and FTR. All right, Bucks and FTR. I'll give you. All right. Anyway, the bag. AEW has storylines. You just have to be just more subtle with their storytelling, like Japanese wrestling is. Yeah, I know. But the problem is, well, I have comments about Mr. Khan uh, shortly. Anyway, so. All right. So now that was technically the main event. They did hit the lights and turn them back on, too. Because that's what they used to do back in the old days when they said lights out match. It means lights out, show's over, turn them back on. Like there's no cameras running, which obviously they were. But that's what they used to do back in the day. Like we're not responsible for what these two guys get. They used to have ambulances drive around the building like in Slapshot. And, you know, they had the security confined swerve and hangman to their rooms. That you was had, cool. You had the this seg- was played well. You had a segment on Wednesday where Hangman burned down Swerve's childhood home, which was I don't amazing. think I ever remember an angle like that. What? Or somebody, somebody burning down somebody's child? I mean, it was... I mean, it's like Austin breaking into Pillman's house. I want to know who's coming up with these ideas lately, because I don't think it's Tony, or he's listening to somebody else. I think the guys do it themselves. That's how AEW's always been. 
Well, then that that speaks volumes. But you can't have it that way because you have to have checks on that shit, checks and balances. Like you just can't do whatever you want with your character when I own your fucking character for this two hour spot. You know what I mean? Mm. But and it should be a collaborative thing. Like I don't need to tell you what to say if I don't want to. Well, again, but- you remember the the thing we saw it live in Philadelphia when Swerve broke into Hangman's house. Yeah, and I thought it was a racist angle. <laughs> Black man breaking an iron. Never seen that before. <laughs> and, but then you have this match is just fucking brutal, and I've seen too many articles about how it was too violent. Because I like, want violent though, and a call back to Magnum and Tully with the spear thing, trying to put it Magnum. Magnum TA took a broke a wooden chair, and they had a steel cage. I quit match. Back at like 85 or 86 for the U.S. title. Yeah. He broke off a fucking wooden leg of the thing and shoved it in Tully's eye. Not not really, obviously. Well, because that's what they did where Hangman But then he took the microphone in front of him. He's like, yes, yes. He, oh, great fucking where match. Where Hangman took, when you said that was, 88? 85 or 6. Uh, Hangman took a splinter from the charred burns of the house and stabbed Swerve. And then him and Swerve were fighting over Yeah, I saw that. And then there was... They, that pair, match was long because I fell asleep and woke like up and it was still hour. on. Yeah. It was supposedly... 31 It was supposedly they had real cinder blocks. Uh, Explain why they didn't break, but I doubt it. I doubt that, too. Why would you do that? People were complaining. The chair better have been gimmicked, too, because that was the loudest fucking chair shot I've ever heard. It was my And back. I was... A, and, okay, because I was in an attitude error. Where yeah. guys took them like that on purpose. Well, that's what Ricky Morton was saying. That Fuck and, him. And Fuck Rod Stewart here. And some other people are, you know, talking about how their AEW's got a, an injury problem. It's because they're too violent and they have concussions. And No, I would blame it more on the high-risk moves. There's too many of them. I saw some stump fucking argument from some WWE bot or Mark. From the pre- president of the Lexus King fan club? Yeah, because... South Jersey chapter? That, you know, w- That's me, by the way. You know, WWE doesn't have as many injuries because they have house shows and a more active schedule. No, they, they do a lot softer style. Yeah, exactly. It's like they, Some guys don't. Like, it's like, Owens is a little rough. It's Yeah, because it's like they keep guys warmed up. Also, because in Japan, they wrestle the same style, but in Japan... Strong style, yeah. They don't have a lot of singles matches. Did you see, speaking of stiff shots and everything, did you see in the first, you didn't see the first match with Garcia and and MJF? No. MJF punched him in the fucking mouth when he was coming off the ropes, and it sounded like he hit him with a shovel. That's how loud it was. Also, because you can see, whenever AEW does a chair shot to the head, you can tell just by, like, the way the light reflects off of that chair that it's plastic and not metal. But uh, why is it like, and people are like, absolutely no chair shots. I'm like, to the head. I'm like, no. I don't, because like, wh- that's where I would hit you if I picked up a chair. Like, I don't think you should do it all the time. But like, you could do if it. anything. It would be like, if you did it out of nowhere, people would be like, oh my God, like they're talking now. Like, how long did they talk about Perry getting hit with the gimmick chair in the cage? They talked about that for a couple weeks. Uh, no, you I could didn't hear do about it. that until now, but. The idea I mean, is- don't Eddie Guerrero, JBL, Eddie Guerrero, the guy. Do it, yeah. I mean, yeah, Eddie had to go to the hospital from blood He finished loss. that fucking match, though. That's a great match. He was doing his little dance and shit. He, he was did fucking great. Yeah, he's probably on adrenaline at that point. And then there was... Uh, he potatoed him, too. He was such an asshole. Who? JBL. He still is an asshole. Like, I was telling you, like, when you read about, like, the guys that would cause, like, all the toxic behavior backstage and would bully people. and Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was it, it was him. He used to get in the shower and soak yeah, people up. I was going to talk about that. Like, that's just... Brian that's, Christopher. Like, that's, like, sex... That's just sexual harassment. Apparently, Brian Christopher had date raped somebody is why he did it. Like, he to scare him. Oh, uh, okay. But still... Okay, but... Not a guy. Just a girl. So. I know, but... I, th- I feel Doesn't like I remember reading that he did that to multiple people. I could see it. And just in general, he was in that. And just anything to do with wrestler's court. Babe Ruth peed on Bill Werber's back in the shower one time. I mean, come on. Like, boys will be boys. But anyway, can I ask, though, has it been explained about the hypodermic needle yet? Because I don't know what was in it. I don't know what he did. Do I have to wait till fucking Wednesday? I think he just stabbed him with it in the cheek. I mean, that... 
that wasn't like what what was on it. It wasn't in like a wrapper. It wasn't like when you go to the tattoo parlor and they pull it right out of the thing. It was uh, it was that was like a dirty needle from the beach. I mean, I I hereby he give you, I give you AIDS. And it's like earlier in the it's like on Wednesday the crowd started chanting, "This is arson." This is all. Oh, they chanted, they "This just- is murder!" During Moxley getting uh, choking out Danielson with the bag. Yeah, and then they, uh, yeah, AEW just for people who are like, yeah, AEW is going too far. That's but, what you want, though. Exactly, you want to hear that. I'm happy for them with this. Oh, like, I was seeing something the because other I got that, some like, other news that, on here that suck. That like AEW shouldn't be letting, shouldn't have let Sting do dives off of the concourse in his sixties. It's up but, to him. No, but also like when they did those sign an insurance waiver, so you can't fucking sue me, those old, were, crazy like, old bastard. Like I saw them, they would. Ke- it was basically like he would only ever do it on like a group of guys, and it was like them. Yeah, they always them. do it like that. Everybody and, does it. It was then like Jeff Hardy's the only fucking idiot that would do it from seventy five. Jeff Hardy would go to Fenway Park and do a fucking swanton off the Green Monster. Didn't he do a swanton off of like the rafters? No, he climbed up the last night. Raw used the towers. They used to have the towers on each side of the um uh, runway. Yeah, he climbed up like halfway and then looked up and told himself he could go higher. He was like, I would bet you he was forty feet up there and dove on the Orton. Now, they went through, like, a breakaway thing, but it's still a fucking hurt. All right. What else do you have? So, overall, great show, I think. Great show. <gasps> this just in. What? James Earl Jones, dead at 93. What? Welcome to Bell Atlantic, local and national for one What the fuck? I'm sorry. Who sent you that, Kevin? Yeah, and then Pussy sent me something and said, no! <laughs> well, he was old. He doesn't yeah. even do the voice anymore, you know? Yeah, I know he's retired. No, but he but, gave him permission to use AI yeah. to do it. But anyway, I had to look at that. I'm sorry. They uh, uh rip, rip James Earl Jones. But anyway, overall great show. People talk about you know how AEW doesn't have good weekly TV. I say kind of how it's like WWF superstars or WCW Saturday morning, where it's like they have you know squash matches and promos, but you. No one denies that they have great pay per views. They have way better pay per views. Oh, I, 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 I said that to to the wife during it. Like WWE and like, the they really do. Like Jeff W. I said it before. If they had WWE's production, oh my god, they I would don't be like WWE's production though. Yeah, of course you don't. I don't. I don't know. Why like, would you? Because you would agree with something. That no, I'm but saying. like, I don't know. Like the thing where like they follow the guy through the backstage area and stuff with the camera. Well, they started doing that a little bit. They bit. They bit right off him with that. Uh, but anyway, let's but get see, to so now, like, if they try doing stuff like that, they're just going to get accused of copying them. So what if it works? Who cares? Some of the best things are, um, uh, you know. The, the All right, what stuff. bad stuff do you have to say? Well, no, I got some bad stuff to say about people, too. All right, this is keeping with the AEW news. Eric Bischoff says Tony Khan should give creative control to Jennifer Pepperman. You know, Mercedes Moans is yeah, writer. Bischoff also gave. Do you agree with that? No. I mean, she's the biggest flop there. Hogan. Bischoff made so many fucking mistakes in WCW. You know, he gave Hogan cre- he let Not Hogan really. have creative control. Not he really. Let, um, he was held back starting in the summer of 89, and then when they let him go, when he came back, they would never give him the same kind of control. 89 or 98? You were 98, 98. Sorry, did I say 89? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was held back after the DX invasion, <clears throat> which was one of the funniest things ever. And uh, Woo-hoo, Mr. Bischoff, like Road Dog said on the Legends of a Wrestle thing, he said we were coming down a runway, and Diamond Dallas Page was like, "Hey guys," and then the door went down. If they were smart, they would have let him come in. I Everybody would have switched the channel, channel to TNT. Yeah, but well, yeah, I think Turner was the one that, or s- someone above him. But Nash and Hall were on the other side of the door, and they're like, "Our friends are like right over there." You know? Rampage eight thirty August thirtieth draws near record lows of two hundred eighteen thousand views. Down almost 25% from the week before. Just fucking cancel it already. Like, seriously. All we don't even stay for it when we go to the show. No. Yeah, we should get to some legal news here. Kevin, what is going on with this? Kevin Kelly, Brandon, whole, and Brandon Tate. It's a bullshit lawsuit. Why is it bullshit? Well, for they one. They said they're being miscategorized. Well, for one, they're being represented by that fake fucking lawyer, Stephen P. New. Hit it. 
fuck off. Fuck Stephen P. New. I doubt he's even a He's done a lot for wrestling. He's going to get them a fucking union. You leave him alone. Fine. If he does that, I'll leave him alone. But whatever. Hey, uh, uh, only re- he just gets stuff on that recording that stupid podcast. But I'm a... Ch- Here's he's the this. legal chief. I Acknowledge put, him. I put this challenge out right now. Cornette, if you hear this, I challenge you to a debate live on the air about wrestling. Oh, my sweet God. You are retarded. You would go. You would go home crying, sucking your thumb. I wouldn't even do that. And I know I've forgotten more than you'll ever know. But anyway. But anyway, the, the Tate they, twins are suing. Who so, are the fucking Tate twins? Okay, you know who Dalton Castle is, right? Oh my God, from Ring of Honor. Yeah, he's an AE, he's like part of AEW, kind of, because he was part of Ring of. You know how he has the boys, like like the guys that come out with him in like the peacock outfits. Yes. Those are the Tate twins. Oh, for Christ's sake. And they were fired. They were released for missing dates. Where Oh, oh. Oh, through the they wrote about it through the tweets and stuff, right? Yeah, and keep talking about this. They I gotta go uh, see a man about a horse. Just keep talking. Wait, what see a man about a horse? Just keep talking. Oh, uh, okay. So what happened was did he stay on over range or I think so. Okay. Check the screen. Okay, yeah, it works. All right. But anyway, what happened was they, from what I've read, they got oh. released for missing dates because they would drive like hours away to an airport, even though there was an airport way closer to them. They just didn't want to fly out of there. Yeah, it sounded very suspect. It's stupid. Like uh, they went like a, like past three airports to go to like a certain one. And yeah. did they bitch about not getting a rent a car or something? Yeah. So, and then Kevin Kelly, who nobody likes, is suing because he's claiming he was unjustly fired. Uh, you know what? They suck anyway. Like who? They suck. Like, Kevin Kelly at least has like called matches for The Rock and stuff. Like yeah, the fucking sucked, Tate twins. But he sucked in New Japan. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. He's a good announcer. He's not good. You now. like you wouldn't know a good announcer if he fucking yelled in your ear. Hey, best commentary team: Nigel McGuinness, Taz, and a lot of people hate Excalibur. I don't really see why, but I think he's a very good play-by-play announcer. Whatever. Excalibur on play-by-play, Taz and Nigel on color. But anyway, there was a bunch of other shit. Because then JR said that it's frivolous on the Conrad Thompson yeah, And podcast. Stephen P. New said, well, Tony's been paying him to do nothing. He's not doing nothing. Oh, what, are you going to defend him now? You laughed when he messed up his diabetes medication. Oh, I'm just saying. You're like, that die, old fat man, die. I'm not saying that he's dying. I'm saying he should retire at this point. But he's been, you know, he's been announcing at all the major pay-per-views, he does at least one match now. And he used to he be He did on, two the other night. And he used to be on every single Dynamite. And WWE the, Dynamite <laughs> was one time. People wanted him dead, man. All and, right. And he called him Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan once. Well, why wouldn't you call him Daniel Bryan? That's what he was used to call him. Collision on 831, record low attendance, 289,000. Are we seeing a pattern here? These shows suck balls. Preview. Like, you don't need these shows. Yeah. Cut it down to once a week because I got something to say about that, too. To, I did you watch the all in scrum? I watched the all out scrum. I watched the all in scrum. Okay. And he Tony spoke that he and Jimmy Jacobs are the only coaches slash agents that make every show. How does everybody not make two days of taping a fucking week and one pay per view, not even a month? How do you not make those? Like, well, no, well, maybe, that that's why you could tell that this is like a hobby for him. Well, maybe they have like staffs of guys where they have like. You know, these guys are responsible for collision. These guys are responsible for dynamite and what gets taped there and, you know, that stuff. Yeah, but don't, on, only two guys don't make it every week? I mean... No, well, geez. only two guys make it every week. It's yeah, like, but how could you not make it every week? This is, to me, is why the Jaguars are bad and Fulham's bad. Anything they own is like, meh. It's well, not I, as good as I'm it could is be. That, is that this is misleading because... They could very well just have like a rotating staff of guys where it's, you know, this guy works every other week and then. Then you got too many people. Whatever. This is the guy's hobby. You even know that's true. He's not a serious booker. 
he could have somebody. Somebody gave him some good advice for this last show. But hey, even TNA Bound for Glory 2011 was good. So, from where Jeff Hardy was drunk? No. Outrunners outsell Swerve Strickland and Merch. How the fuck does that happen? They're getting over the Outrunners, Truth Magnum and Turbo Floyd. They won their the first. Who and the who and the what now? Truth Magnum and Turbo Floyd. They sound like a condom and a vibrator. Look, look them up. Watch no, their I'd rather promos. Not. They're fucking crazy. I'd rather have a picture of a condom. They're like a, a parody of like '80s wrestlers. It's hilarious. They just won their first ever match on like Collision or something, and then Moxley beat them up backstage. Oh, this is dead nice. I don't think we're gonna have enough time for keeper cut because no, no. Let, let's just do it now. Hold on, I'm trying to see. Really, we don't have to talk about anything else, really. No, there's some other things I want to talk about at the end, but we'll just uh... okay. Well, let me get the roster up, okay, and I'll I'll read the people to you. I can't wait for this. Okay, roster. Uh, let me just read down in alphabetical order. Aaron Solo. Bye. Action Andretti. Out of here. Adam Cole. Bay Bay. Got to keep. Adam Copeland. He's injured. You can't justly fire him. Adam Page. Keep him. Alex Aberhantes. Bye. Alex Reynolds of the Dark Order. See you. And Helico. What? Still there? <laughs> I know. That's what I mean. Get him out of here. <laughs> they got rid of all the wins and losses here, too. They don't even track them on the website anymore. Good. And uh, Angelo Parker, cool hands. Bye. Anthony Bowens of the Acclaimed. Keep him. The Governor, Anthony Agogo of Shane Taylor Promotions. Agogo, Solo, Colorado. Bye bye. AR Fox. AR I didn't 15. even know he was still AR 15, his ass. Ari Davari. See you. Austin Gunn. I keep the gun. Bandito. I like him, so yeah. I didn't know he was still here. <laughs> Neither does he. The Redwood, Big Bill. Keep him. Daddy Ass, Billy Gunn. Keep him. Bishop Kahn. Who? Bishop Kahn. <laughs> of Gates of Agony fame? Oh, goodbye. Brandon Cutler. Keep him around. Brian Cage. You gotta have early mid card guys, so yeah, keep him. Too. Brody King. Uh, I keep him. Brian Danielson. Absolutely. Keep him. Bra- Bad Apple, Brian Keith. Bye bye. Rolling in the bees. Buddy Matthews. Keep him. Cash Wheeler of FTR. Keep him. Chris Jericho. Keep Jer- him off TV. Jericho, I'm sorry, man. You're taking up a spot. Get out of here. Christian Cage. I could take or leave him. The Kentucky Gentleman, Chuck Taylor. I want to be notified when he dies. He's apparently transitioning to a backstage role I anyway. say he's transitioning to a woman. I remember, like, it explains the wrestling style. Go oh, ahead. God, that's not funny. Yes, it is. Uh, Claudio Castagnoli. Oh, my God. We share a birthday. Really? Yeah, he's December 27th of 80. I'm 78. Um, boom, I'll boom. Cole him. Cabana. He's still there? Yeah. Colton Gunn. Oh, yeah. I said I would keep both guns. Dan Housen. I thought they released him. Oh, God. Get him out of there. He was a fucking waste. Daniel Garcia. They actually put him in the video game before you were pulling out shit from out of the ring. You could pull him out and he would curse you. You know that? No, I didn't play Fight Forever that. <laughs> Dante Martin. Bye. Darby Allen. Keep him. Da- Darius but Martin. But you can't wear that fucking pink jacket no more. Darius, Darius Martin. Martin. Bye. Dax Harwood. Keep him. Drillistico. Bye. Dustin Rhodes. Bye. Dutch of the Righteous. Bye. Eddie Kingston. Eh. Take or leave him. Keep him. Evil Uno. Oh, fuck him. Griff Garrison. Bye. He's nobody without Lexus King. <laughs> He's the one member of the Lexus King fan club. Go ahead. Hologram. Nah, I don't fucking give a shit. I don't know. That's a He's stupid good. name. That's a stupid name, too. They're building him up. He's good. Hook. I hate no. Fire his father, too. I don't want everyone to hear him again. Really? You don't like Hook? No, I don't like Hook. Isaiah Cassidy, Brother Zay. Goodbye. Jack Perry. 
Keep him for right now. Him and Danielson. Wait, I, are him and Danielson done? I think so. Yeah, get rid of him. What? I don't, I don't like him. He's a waste. God, you're brutal. Jay Lethal. Keep him. He's like the jobber to the stars. Jay White. Keep him. Jeff Jarrett. Get rid of him. Slap nuts. Get rid of him. John Silver, the Dark Order. I like him, but they suck. So Johnny TV. Yeah, I didn't even know he's there. Goodbye, John. John Moxley. You got to keep him with this shit going on right now. Other than that, if he wasn't working with anybody right now, I'd be sending him packing. God, you fucking suck with this. The technical beast, Josh Woods. I, the fact that I don't know who that is, he can take a walk. Juice Robinson. I like Juice. Katsuyori Shibata. No. Bye-bye. What? He's, he's lame, dude. He's fucking lame. His text-to-speech gimmick? Eh, I'm over that already. Okada. Keep him. Bitch. <laughs> Keith Lee. Yeah, take him and his he, side titties and leave. Kenny Omega. Oh, yeah, I keep Kenny. Kill switch. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know what he's doing for anybody. He's he he. They're building towards him turning on Christian. Yeah, no, nobody cares. I would care. Super I would bad. Care. Kip Sabian. Bye. Commander. Fuck him too. Takeshita. Keep him. Kota Ibushi. Uh, Might never wrestle again at this yeah, point. Fuck him. Just, just, Kyle Fletcher. I'll pay you not to wrestle. How about that? Kyle Fletcher, I like. Kyle O'Reilly. I like Kyle O'Reilly. He's in the conglomeration now. That's a stupid name, but keep going. Hey, well, Mark Briscoe made it up. Yeah, this is a fucking shock. Lance Archer. I I don't think he's doing anything with anybody. Send him to MLW with Davey Boy. They can be killer elite squad again. Big shoddy Lee Johnson. Goodbye. I don't even know who that is. Lee Moriarty of Shane Oh, Taylor I fact that he was in a fucking match the other night. He was with Shane Taylor. He's I in was Shane so Taylor. mad. He's in Shane Taylor promotion. Like, why is he there? Like, is Peter Avalon going to come out next? <laughs> is he still on the roster? He's the Ring of Honor peer champion, Lee Moriarty. Whatever. Just keep going. Keep or cut him. Who? Lee Moriarty. Goodbye. Luther. He's Tony Storm's butler. I guess keep him. Malachi Black. I like Malachi. Mark Briscoe. Keep him. <laughs> Mark Davis. The other guy from Aussie Open? He's been injured for like ever. He had, he's, uh, he had bad knee injury. Whatever. Just, I, would, I, would, I don't know. Smart. Fletch, Fletcher's branched out on his own now. Smart Mark Sterling. Bye. Mark Quinn. Goodbye. Daddy Magic. He does a lot of commentary Goodbye. now. Goodbye. Matt Seidel. Goodbye. Matt Taven. Goodbye. Matt Jackson. I keep both of the bucks. Max Caster. I keep him too because he's with Bo. Michael Nakazawa. Goodbye, Michael. Sorry. Keep him for when Kenny comes back. No. Mike Bennett. Goodbye. Miro. Goodbye. MJF. Keep him. Brody. Oh, well, I forgot. He's on here. Brody Lee and Brody Lee Jr. are on here. I, I, I would keep Brody Lee Sr. over some of the guys I cut. Nicholas Jackson. I keep him. Nick Comorado. Come on, Otto. Bye bye. Nick Nick Wayne. Bye. He's a loser. Orange Cassidy. Yeah. He's a good worker. I I I I'll keep him. Ortiz. I forgot he was still here. Oh fuck him. Mike Santana's gone. He he's in TNA, isn't he? Yeah. Pack. Oh yeah, you definitely keep him. Paul White. He works backstage. Goodbye now. with his crooked legs. Penta El Zero Miedo. He's apparently him and Ray Phoenix are apparently leaving soon anyway. Well then let's show him the door. Let's- Peter Avalon. Oh, my God. He's still on the fucking roster. According to the website. Oh, goodbye, Peter. Powerhouse Hobbs. Bye. Press 10 Vance. Bye. Prince Nana. You keep him for swerve. He's hilarious. Ray Phoenix is leaving. Ricky Starks is probably leaving. Ricochet, he just got here. I keep him. I always liked him. Hey, how about that? The little promo backstage. Rick, Ricochet can't fucking talk. They kept that going on for too long. He should have just said nothing to him and stared at him. Because that was a good moment for a minute. And Osprey set him up and he dropped the ball because he's a shitty fucking promo guy. Thank God he's an awesome wrestler. Because he is fucking horrible. I got you, dog. I'm right here, dog. I'm right here, dog. I'm right here, dog. What the fuck is wrong with him? <laughs> so, yeah, they need to give him a manager of some kind. Yeah, he needs to never talk again. But most high flying, like baby faces, don't have managers. Shawn Michaels tried it. He had a, when he was baby face, Jose Lothario was his manager. Suits who trained him. Roderick Strong. 
Keep him. He's a fucking technical master. Roosh. Goodbye. Sammy Guevara. Goodbye. Samoa Joe. Goodbye. What? I would get rid of him. You suck at making a You roster. can't fucking keep everybody. You can't have like 8, 9, 10, 12, 15 top main event guys. Because the whole point is getting the most out of these guys. So keep going. Scorpio Sky. Oh, is that even a question? He's in Ring of Honor Fuck now. Fuck him. We're selling Ring of Honor too. the minute we... <laughs> Serpentico. Eh. I'm keeping more Japanese than Mexicans. The, the captain, Sean Dean. Goodbye. Don't even know. Sanjay Dutt. He works backstage. Goodbye. He's one of the producers. Bye-bye. Sting's on here. Yeah, Stokely, I would keep Sting. Stokely Hathaway. Stokely's funny. Swerve. Oh, yeah. Beast Mortos. He's A lot not of people bad. like He's him. He's not bad. The Blade and the Butcher. Oh, my God. Get rid... They're there? <laughs> yeah, they're... Yeah. Oh, my God. I did see them on, like, Collision or something. They're Tony rampant. Leona. Nah. Tony Nice. I like Tony Nice, but if you're not going to have a cruiserweight... Trent today, Beretta. What are you picking him for? He's injured right I now. I have a floor that needs to be done. So, yes, I will keep Trey Peretta. Vincent of the Righteous. Goodbye. Wardlow. Goodbye. Wheeler Yuta. I like Wheeler. He's gonna. They're not finished with him yet anyway. Will Osprey. Oh, he's number one with a bullet. Okay, now we're at women's roster. Abaddon. Bye. Anna Jay is getting a lot better in Japan also. Keep her. She's been in stardom on... Excursion this summer, and I've seen she's getting a lot better too. Keep her, Athena. She is tearing it up in Ring of Honor. Yeah, it's the old Ember Blue or whatever. Her name Ember was. Moon. Ember Moon. Britt keep, Baker. Keep Britt Baker. Too. Deanna Perazzo. Ooh, keep her. Diamante. No idea. No. Emmy Sakura. Goodbye. How are we, Cameron? How how are we? What? How, how are we, Cameron? Oh, I no, I don't even care. Hikaru Shida. Keep her. Jamie Hader. Keep her. Julia Hart. Uh, no. But, oh, God, you don't know these. Camille. I, you have to keep her around because you got to get the payoff with Mercedes. Karen Jarrett. Ugh. Steven Tyler from the Aerosmiths? No. Kiara Hogan. No. Chris Statlander. Yes. Layla Gray. No. Legit Layla Hirsch. No. Madison Rain. No. Mariah May. Yes. Marina Shafir. Yes. Mercedes Martinez. Is that Mercedes Mornay? No. Mercedes Martinez, she's one tough woman. So wait, there's two girls named Mercedes? Yeah. It's a pretty common name. It just means Lady of Mercy. Yeah, we're cutting them both. Really? You want to cut Mercedes Monet? Yeah. Uh -oh. It's a waste of fucking money. Mother Wayne. Bye. Oh, God, you fucking suck at making a roster. You would never be able to run a wrestling promotion. I could. Oh, okay. Nyla Rose. No. I could book a wrestling promotion. Sure, sure, sure you could. Go ahead. Penelope Ford. Bye. You don't Queen. need that many women. You don't. You're, you're trying to book a promotion like it's the 80s. But you only have... And I, I would get rid of one of the titles. Why would you have the TBS champion and the women's world champion? Because you, you have a mid-card belt. No, it's stupid. <sighs> Queen Amianta. No. Get rid of her. Rebel. See you later. Red Velvet, we, 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 we're Ring of Honor Women's World TV Champion, just like Athena's the Ring of Honor Women's Champion. Sayonara! Riho! Just because I like saying that. Riho! Yes, I'll keep her. Ruby Soho. Uh, she's... Ugh, God, she's out on maternity leave. You're not allowed to fire her. Latrine. Oh, is she ugly? Oh, whatever. Skip over it then. Soraya. Oh, goodbye. She's Go shoot porn. Go shoot porn. She's putting other people over. She sucks. The Serena Deeb. Keep her. Sky Blue. Keep her too. She's hurt. Ty Mello. No. I think Sky Blue is going to come back and feud with Mariah. I think that's what they're building towards. Yeah. Taya Valkyrie. No. Thunder Rosa. No. Tony Storm. Yes. Willow Nightingale. Yes. Yuka Sakazaki. No. Now we have the broadcast team. Oh, yes. Alex Marvez. Bye-bye. Alicia Atout. Backstage interview? No, I don't want her as a backstage interview. Alejandro Riojas. Yeah, goodbye. Arca this is the Spanish announced team. We, we, we don't need one of those. What? I'm pulling the show off the Spanish markets now. <laughs> we, we need a French Gotta save money. Go ahead. <laughs> we need a French announced team. Yeah, they boogies. Ray Rougeau and Johnny Rougeau. 
Who else? Come on. Arcady Aurora. She's part of the Spanish yeah, team. Yeah, well, then she's unemployed now. Bobby Cruz. Goodbye. Carlos Cabrera. Oh, Carlos? He he's can do Spanish it all by team. himself. He's just he's just explaining it. We'll keep Carlos. Excalibur. Goodbye. You have no taste. I have great taste. Ian Riccoboni. No. Jim Ross. Yes. You'll keep JR, but you won't keep... JR is a good announcer. Justin Roberts. Oh, yeah. He's, he's the dapper yapper. Lexi Nair. Who? Backstage interviewer. Goodbye. Nigel McGinnis. Yes. Renee Paquette. Yes, Renee could do all the backstage inter interviews. I don't wants. know why Satnam Singh is on here. Well, he's not there now if I take over. Taz. See you, buddy. Tony Schiavone. Jim Ross and Schiavone might be good together. So, that, so that's the commentary team? Yeah, why not? And Cabrera does the Spanish by himself. Okay, then we have the referees. The all women referees are now fired. There's only one of them. Well, get rid of, her. Get rid of Rick Knox, too. Rick Knox. Bring in Brian Hedberg from Impact. And then we got the coaches. Oh, yeah. Let me hear that fucking dreck. Jerry Lynn. Keep. Pat Buck. No idea who that is, so get rid of him. And Sarah Stock. No idea. I was reading is. about her. She's been a wrestler for like 20 years all over the independent. Is it Sarah Del Rey? Was that used to be her name? Well, I think so. Look her up I'll because she up. was like. Was she good? Yeah. She used to train people at the Ring of Honor school back in the day. Sarah Stock, Sarah Griffin, Sarah Swayze, Sweet Sarah, Canadian Dark Angel, Dark Angel, Natasha Graves. No Sarah Del Rey? No, she's been in AAA, CMLL, TNA, World Wonder Ring Stardom. Oh. All right. Is that it? We no, gotta, hold on. We got to... We got to talk about the Fed. Do you hear Odyssey Jones is no longer on the roster Yeah, page? for domestic violence issues. Is that what it is? Yes. I hadn't gotten it when I... That, there was also the thing, he said uh, he, uh, he was transphobic on, on lying like last year uh, as well. But it's the domestic violence thing. He was in the middle of the storyline with the New Day. Yeah, I know, which I thought it was odd that he got fired. Where Kofi brought him in as the replacement for Big E and Xavier Woods wasn't happy. Bret Hart to be in attendance. That'll be tonight's Raw in Calgary, 9-9. But like you said, he looks like fucking Weekend at Bernie's. Yeah, they're probably paying him like $100,000 to go out there and say two words. Like it, It's like at the uh, at World Wrestling All-Stars oh. when he came out and he was the general manager. And he was like, you know, I'm stuck in Australia because of 9-11. I can't get a plane back to the United States. Fuck terrorists or something like that, Jesus he said. Christ. <laughs> Oscar resides with WWE. That's good news for them. Word has it, this is per Conrad Thompson, you know, Ric Flair's other son in law. Word has it that the Netflix. Who's he married to? The other daughter. There's another daughter? There's like, he has many kids. It was David, Ashley, which is Charlotte. Reed. Another daughter. Reed's dead. Yeah, but I think there was like four or five of them. He said the Netflix documentary about Vince is I a saw shovel, this. shovel, burial, and WWE is not happy, called it a hit piece. We have to fucking watch it. If it's accurate, like this apparently is, then I'll watch it. I was worried that it was going to be like a puff piece on it. Uh, I was worried about that, too. I think you would know fairly early on. I also wanted to go over the fucking star ratings. For what? Um, Bash at Berlin. What do you see these? And also, Glenn Gilberti writes... The, Nobody in it talking about the pay per view the other night. You know, you're, which one? All out. The gifted one. Yeah, the gifted one. The dancing fool. Yes, the dancing fool. He wrote about the pay per view the other night. Nobody in the decision making process thought suffocating someone was a bad idea to be included in the professional wrestling program. And needles too. What audience was this directed to? And Brody King writes to him, "The sickos, bitch." All right, are you ready for this? I'm just going to tell you. This yeah. is Uncle Dave's star ratings, and there ain't a five-star among them. Shocker. <laughs> Cody Rhodes versus Kevin Owens, undisputed WWE Championship, four and a quarter. That was a good match. I didn't see it. Bianca Belair and Jade didn't Cargill versus – that was three, but it was – he gave Punk and McIntyre four and a half stars. That's two. At two and a half at most. Damian Priest and 
Rhea Ripley versus Donker Stewart and Liv Morgan, three and three quarter. And Gunther versus Randy Orton went four and a half. So they were, they were, so you're telling me the Orton Gunther match and Punk McIntyre were just as good as each other? Get the fuck out of here. He's fucking, he's, he's low, he's out of his fucking mind. Well, he gave Tony and Mariah like, one and a half stars. And that was a five star match. Yeah, and he gave I'm going to say, not technically, it wasn't. It didn't. It, no. it had the story behind it. Mm -hmm. Just like they're going to. There's just like it's going to be an amazing technical match and an amazing story match when they have Danielson versus Moxley. No, Dan, Danielson will make him look like a million bucks. Which he should get paid a million bucks for getting. Box is an man. amazing wrestler. He's an amazing asshole. That's what he is. He's the I worst know, member know. of the fucking Shield. Shut up. He is. Shut uh, up, Meg. Good night, everybody. Ah, signing off. Get your hand off my penis.